What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of KM Videos True Stories. I never stopped, I never stopped banging, I, I started banging hard and I got so hard that it was a shame. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of KM Video True, 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 true stories. Some of you always asking about gambling stories in other hoods, crossing enemy lines. So I got one of those for you. This was in the early 2000s, maybe around 03, something like that. So we got this homeboy named Mario Summers. A lot of people associate Mario with the Hoovers. His brother Roy, according to newspapers, was from Hoover. So we over on 74th and Vermont. Mario was a hustler and a big time gambler at the time. It's a kind of tricky area for an outsider. So Mario and his family, they well known throughout the city of Los Angeles back in the day. But in the early 2000s, somewhere around 03, I go over to Mario's house. Mario was a big gambler. Mario used to come to the hood and gamble a lot. So this particular day, I'm going to his house to gamble. And this is my first time gambling at the Summers house. And we in the backyard, kind of in the driveway behind the fence. And it's about four other dudes there. And I don't recognize none of them. And I'm assuming they all little young hustlers. All of them was probably two, three to four years younger than me. Mario is my age. And we, uh, we commenced the gambling. We shooting dice. And this one fool gets on the dice. He rolls a couple of times, he catches a six point, and he disses the hood. So I'm like, oh shit, like I'm in hostile territory, you know what I'm saying? When in Rome, do as Romans do. But no, I can't do that. My pride won't allow it. So I let him get away with it, and when I get on the dice, boom, I catch an eight point, and I'm dissing the trade. I'm dissing. And then Mario grabs the dice and gets in the middle of the game. He's like, wait, hold up. He's like, we ain't finna have none of that over here. I'm like, shit, cuz this in my hood, I'm going to diss his hood. Come to find out, this is Antoine Miller. They call him Twan. He was part of the LA4, the 92 riots with little football, Henry Watson and those guys, right? But... From my understanding, he wasn't even no a Trey gangster. He was like a 7-1 hustler. But he's dissing the hood. And I thought he was from a Trey gangster, so, you know, it only made sense. And the way Mario jumped in and stopped all that, you know, lets me know that there was some affiliation back there. So two of the other dudes, they bang a Trey gangster on me. I banged the set back on them. And Mario like, cuz, next person do that, you gotta go. You gotta go, man. I'm not playing. I never seen Mario so mad before, especially on the set trip. And so uh, Mario was like, man, you, you back here gambling with me. Man, you gotta be cool. I wouldn't have you back here. And he told me, like, you know, this, this dude right here is Kev Mack from 60s. He like, this Twan. And that's when I recognized that was Twan. But like I said, I thought he was from a Truck Gangster. So anyway, we continue gambling and stuff, and uh, the whole time I'm thinking, these fools can't wait till I leave. I know they're going to dome me in the back of the head, right? But uh, we keep gambling. I'm winning. I'm winning. They're getting mad. They're getting hot. You know what I'm saying? And then Mario starts kind of breaking me, you know, so I think they found something to be proud about as they see Mario getting the money. But 
Yeah, there was one of those instances, man, when you out of bounds, you out of line, you never know who you're going to run across with hot heads. And when you're shooting them dice, like I say, man, craps in the backyard is like the devil, man. Craps in the backyard and crack cocaine always look like the devil to me because it's always a chance some bullshit is going to jump off, even if it's not in the crap game, which usually it starts in the crap game. Crap games are usually held somewhere where the enemy is lurking. You got dudes that go to, after a funeral, the repast, you might get busts on there. You, you gambling at dope spots, you might get busts on there. Gambling at known gang hangouts, you could get busts on there. You know what I mean? So it's always, for those that don't gamble it's in L.A., during the hot days, there's always a chance that things could go wrong. But for some reason, the adrenaline, the, the rush to get some money, the hustle, avoiding going to work, working a nine to five, getting a career, always seemed more attractive to the street dudes. And I was one of them dudes. It was the addiction that led me to all these different hoods to gamble. Like it was always cool for a 6 to gamble in the Harlems, the Dinos, the Hunnets. Like, everything was cool, but when you start gambling with the enemy, whether they hardcore or not so hardcore, whether they undercover or they really out there, like the potential for something to go bad is so high. And it was always that rush and that addiction that attracted me to gamble in hostile areas. I'm so glad those days are behind me. I haven't gambled, I haven't shot dice in probably 10 years now. It's been about 10 years. So I feel good about that, man. That's one addiction that I don't wish on nobody. It was fun. It was fun. It was a good hustle, but it could be dangerous. So that's one that I forgot to tell y'all about gambling in the Hoovers, 74th in Vermont, with some gangsters and some hustlers. Please click the like button. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I tell all sorts of stories here, man. You might get some gang bangs, shoot them up, some county jails, some prison, some lifting weights, gambling pigeons, pit bulls, any of those type of stories here. So always stay, stay alert, stay tuned in the cam video. True stories and live streams. I'm out of here, y'all. Thanks for watching. Salute.